I want to take a moment and describe the three different major groups of fungi, fruiting fungi, so that as mushroom cultivators, foragers, and just general myco enthusiasts, we understand how these mushrooms grow in the environment and how the, the different groups that they're part of, how that affects our ability to potentially cultivate or find these mushrooms in the wild. So the three different types of fungi to get to know, especially for, uh, for cultivation, the first group is called saprophytic. So these are the types of fungi that grow on dead um, or dying, uh, basically trees or will grow on any types of carbon material. So on this dead birch log, we have this um, resinous polypore. This is a dead tree here. And on this dead tree, we have what looks like there's a foamy spermaterius, a, a horse hoof fungi, and what looks like a young uh, artist conch. So another really common um, mushroom that you're going to get to know through this course is the oyster mushrooms, the shiitake mushrooms. Both of those also fall into the category saprophytic fungi. So they are the decomposers. They're the ones who are breaking down the dead organic material so that the, that can be recycled in the environment. So all the mushrooms that we are interested in for cultivating fall into that saprophytic um, category. In the wild as a mushroom forager, uh, how I find those types of fungi is I pay attention to where the dead and dying trees are. Um, in good forest stewardship, I make sure that I'm leaving dead uh, standing trees as long as they're not hazardous. We're making sure we're leaving dead organic material on the ground. And if I see a tree that is fruiting, say with oyster mushrooms, um, I can assume that if I keep going back to that dead tree, it's going to fruit for probably at least a few years until the mycelium has kind of expended and fully rotted down that tree. Um, so I pay attention to, um, to those spots and I can go back and visit those areas and potentially get multiple fruitings. Um, so that's that first main group. The second group of fungi, which is really, really fascinating, is the group that we call mycorrhizal. So myco as in mushroom, rhizal as in roots. So these are the, the mushrooms that actually grow in a mutually beneficial relationship with trees. Some really famous, uh, well-known uh, mycorrhizae fungi include the chanterelle mushrooms, uh, black trumpets, truffle mushrooms. Um, I think the matsuki was really popular at West. Um, and a number of the bolete species that we hunt in this area are all mycorrhizae fungi. So what's really neat about this uh, group of organisms is that they actually join uh, their mycelial network to the living root systems of the trees. The trees will give the, my, the mycelial network um, sugars that it produces through photosynthesis. And then the mutually beneficial exchange is that the mycelium uh, works to more effectively break down nutrients from the soil so that the trees can absorb it. And that mycelial network through the mycorrhizae fungi also connect tree to tree to tree. And so if you've ever heard about mushrooms being kind of the internet of the forest before, um, it's actually through that mycorrhizae network that tree species can send these biochemical signals um, and trees can communicate to each other through that, that fungal network. Um, and that is very much a beneficial relationship on both end of the tree and of the fungi. Um, as a mushroom forager, I'm always really interested in the exact locations that I find those mycorrhizae fungi. So when I see chanterelles coming up in a particular location, I know that that mycelial network is going to live in that area as long as those trees are standing. So year after year after year, I can reliably go back to those same locations to forage those wild mushrooms. From a cultivation perspective, it's important to know that because we're looking at something with such a specific complex relationship, that relationship of the mycelia and the tree, these mushrooms fall under the category of ones that we can't easily cultivate. So that's why things like chanterelles and black trumpets are considered these kind of expensive, more rare mushrooms because uh, we can't actually cultivate them in the wild. Hey, sorry, I'm just jumping in here for a moment. My name's Chris Gilmore and I'm the creator of this channel, Chris Outdoors, and the person leading the mushroom walk today is my amazing wife, Laura. 
I just wanted to let you know about another uh, learning opportunity that my wife and Laura and I have created, and it's called the Mushroom Growers and Wild Fungi Identification Course. If you're interested in learning how to ID more mushrooms out in the wild, uh, if you want to be able to forage mushrooms for food and medicine, or if you want to be able to grow mushrooms at home, regardless of whether you live in an urban apartment or you live out on a homestead, then this course might be uh, of super interest to you. We actually do a virtual mushroom walk as part of this course, and we go through all kinds of different species, their ecology, their identification features, their properties, and we also teach you how to grow to increase your self-reliance and provide you with healthy medicinal uh, food right from your own home. So if that interests you, check out the mushroom course dot com the mushroom course dot com or check out the link in the description and now let's go join Laura back out in the forest. The last group of fungi that's important to know about is the parasitic fungi and parasitic fungi I always like to preface with in our English language we use parasite as a negative term and in the fungal world it's just a descriptor um, so it's really important all different types of fungi have different roles in the ecosystem and so these parasitic fungi even though they might be what's deemed to be harmful for the tree or harmful for other organisms, they have a very important role um, that are sometimes actually, because these relationships are so complex, it's sometimes still unknown to humans what that, what that importance in the environment is. So sometimes that parasite will be a individual mushroom is parasitic to the tree. So honey mushrooms are there was one just along the base of this tree here. Honey mushrooms are known to infect a living tree and will kill it. The really famous chaga mushrooms are a par parasite um, that infect a damaged part of a birch tree and over time will kill the tree. And it's important that they actually often for the reproductive cycle kill actually kill the tree. Um, another really interesting way that fungi can be parasitic is that they can actually parasitize other species of fungi. So what we actually have going on this tree right now, this is a dead tree and along the stump would probably be still alive. That's why the honey mushrooms are growing out of the stump of this, this tree. There's the honey mushroom species. And then the other mushroom that's growing out of this tree here is an entoloma. And then there are these really bizarre, almost brain like structures. They're a little dark now. When they first come out, they're bright, bright white and quite firm. This fungi, I'm just gonna pick one that's along the base here, it's in good shape. This fungi is actually the honey mushroom that has parasitized the entoloma mushroom and made this one that's called an aborted entoloma. Um, and it's a parasite of, of the honey mushrooms to this and, and it actually makes an edible species. Another really well-known um, parasite fungi are the lobster mushrooms. So we have the saprophytic that consume dead and dying wood. Um, we have mycorrhizae, fungi that's living in a mutually beneficial relationship with trees. And then we have parasitic fungi that either parasitize a living tree or even parasitize other fungi. So knowing which uh, group the fungi that you're interested in falls under will not only help you identify if it's a species you could cultivate, but also know whether or not um, you're going to rely to find it in the same spot or not if you're ever wild foraging fungi. So a little challenge to end this segment is to go out and actually try to find a fungi that fit into the, each of those categories. So in my area, um, any of the kind of shelf fungi that grow on these dead or dying trees are pretty reliable to find. So a saprophytic shelf fungi that you can find on dead or dying trees, a a mycorrhizae fungi that you might be able to find in your area if you're lucky enough maybe you can find some black trumpets or chanterelles if it's early in the summertime and a parasitic fungi that you might be able to find in your area it might be chaga mushrooms or if it's in the fall um, the honey mushrooms so research a few mushroom species figure out what time of year it is and go out and try to find one from each different group